Hello everyone. This video tutorial is about 2D frame analysis in Abacus. So this is a problem uh, which I'm going to model and analyze step by step. So for this model, this problem is from this book Introduction to Finite Element Analysis using MATLAB and Abacus. Chapter 4, Rigid Joint Frames, and that is problem from Chapter 4. So these are uh, steps. First, you need to check your units are consistent. And you can use set 1 Newton meter Pascal, or the set 2 is Newton millimeter mega Pascal or Newton per millimeter squared. So, in this problem, in this problem, uh, modulus of elasticity is Newton per meter squared, area is in point, uh, meter squared, and uh, second moment of area as meter raised per 4. So, uh, because the section is not mentioned, so for value of a and i i assume uh, so these values are for rectangular section and for that rectangular section b and d width and depth of beam is 0 0.4 and 0 0.4 for vertical members and for horizontal member uh, b width of beam is 0 0.25 and depth of beam is 0.4 so to start, you need to set work directory. So I'll go here in Abacus file, set work directory, and it is temporary. I want to set that chapter four as work directory. So it is a set work directory. So here are steps for modeling problem 4.1. So these steps are different or I have added more features in the model compared to my previous video, which is 2D rigid joint frame analysis using the backers. So this one uses some basic modeling procedure, but in this one, I have used more features. So this is plastic hinge or internal hinge on uh, here on top horizontal member. So what I'm going to do is I am going to model that two columns like lower floor columns and upper floor columns and lower floor beam as one part and then i'm going to model that lower horizontal uh, map uh, lower beam as a single part and then i'm going to create partition to apply these loads on that so for part you can use model tree so first i need to save that rename that as chapter 4 problem 4.1 so that is part and now i'm going to save this one file save and chapter 4 chapter 4 problem if i can rename that if it is required Okay, so click OK. And now you can use here in the model tree part, or you can use here in the module part. You need to double click here, or you can use these tabs. You can go part, and then you can create here. So you have three options. You can either go uh, in the tab part, create part, 
then in the module create part or here in the model tree create part okay so i am going to frame and then 2d deformable wire and approximate size of the wire is like double of the maximum dimension so that is 10 so two times of that is 20 so approximate size is 20 so continue and then i need to model that frame so this is the origin and from origin it is it is 0 10 so that is the first part of that cancel procedure then again it is 9 0 and 9 10 and then you need to and then you need to create another one which is at 5 so now is done so now in parts you can see that frame you have or uh, designed or modeled or this one frame you have modeled now the next one you need to model that upper uh, beam upper beam in two parts so it is 4.5 and 4.5 so the next one is i am going to go here part create and that is upper beam left so 2d deformable wire so i am going to model it a little bit up from the center so let's say from here it is 1 1 and then i have here as 5.5 and 1 okay so the total length of that is total length of this is 4.5 so cancel procedure done and then you have upper beam left then again i'll go part and then or here in the part create part and that is upper beam right so and i am going to model it a little bit uh, here 1 2 and then 5.5 and 2 if you cancel procedure done so i have created all three parts of the frame here next step in the property module uh, need to create material and here beams they have so the beams in that that has different um, modulus of elasticity and columns that has different modulus of elasticity so columns has 35 megapascal and beams 70 megapascal so i'll go here and then i can use uh, so that one and then i can go to property and assign material here or in the model tree you have material here double click on that so columns mechanical elasticity elastic and for columns it's 35 megapascal and 0.3 is the Poisson's ratio so that is columns and then I create another material for beams mechanical elasticity and then elastic and for call uh, beams it is 70 megapascal click OK so now you can see that you have created two materials next you need to create profile in the property module and profile of these uh, profile of vertical members or columns is rectangular 
and profile of horizontal members or beams is also rectangular and these are b and d values for that so i can use that property module to here create profile you can use that here in the tab profile create profile so there are two profiles so like for beams and rectangular continue so for beams it is horizontal member b is 0.25 d is 0.4 horizontal members are b so here width is 0.25 and then its depth is 0.4 then i can here i can go uh, like in the model tree i can create profile so it is columns rectangular and then their profile is 0.4 and 0.4 both uh, width and depth of the beam is 0.4 and 0.4 next is in the property module you can go and create a section so in backers you have here in model tree you can create section in property module you can create section and then here you have section so create so the section is i am using it as beams so beam type is beam continue and then profile name beam and material for that one is beam okay now i can create from here in the uh, module i'll go property in the property module create section so it is columns and category is beam type is beam continue and here profile name is column and material is column so i click okay there so now next step is assign section so there are three materials and for i'll go property in property is a part so frame is there so for horizontal member there is a different section and vertical member is a different section so then i go property and here i have assign section so no need of creating any step so that i select that one so that is a horizontal so done and i in the section so that is horizontal members or beams and the next one i'll select the region to be assigned section i select these two and then with the shift i select other two so then these ones are vertical members or columns so done and here the section assignment is columns so i have assigned these ones horizontal members as beams and vertical members as columns so and then next one you need to assign beam orientation so in the property module in the property module you can go here assign beam orientation i'll select all those and done and these orientation for the columns are upward and for the beams are towards uh, right so i'll press enter and that are the beam orientations there i click okay so it's done and now upper upper beam left for that one i'll assign section and a, a section for that one is horizontal or beams and that is the beam orientation done it is towards right so okay and done and now for upper beam right so you'll go there assign section the section assigned done and then it is beam okay and then orientation done so okay so now is done so i can go in the part check for frame so section the sign so these are for beam and if you click on that these are the columns and for upper left section assignment you can check that it is 
section assigned. Now for upper beam right section assignment and you can see the sections are being assigned to all three. So after assigning beam orientation, I need to create partition. So you need to create partition edge because I have modeled that lower horizontal beam as a single segment and I need to create partition so I can apply load. And the coordinate for the first partition are 3, 5 and the coordinate for the second partition are 6, 5. So I have here different options. I can go to a part module here and then uh, to create partition, to edge, I need to first create datum point. And for that one, in the part module, you can go here and that you have a create datum point by entering coordinates or you can go tools and tools, partition and then partition edge. But for that one, you need to use that select midpoint or datum point. So first you need to create datum point and that you have for create datum point and you can go tools and then data create datum point and enter coordinates so the coordinate for that one for the first point are 3 and 5 so that is so i want to create that datum point on this frame and here, so tools, datum, datum point, and here enter coordinates. So first you need to, uh, so it is 3, 5, and 0. So you can see that it is being created here. The next one is 6, 5, 0, and that is being created there. So I can go to that frame and you can see here features. So that is a datum point one and that is a datum point two. Then I can, here I have option of here, partition edge, select midpoint or datum point, or you can go here in tools, partition, edge, select midpoint. Okay, so that is another option. So, it says that select an edge to part create partition. So I'll select that one and that select a point on edge. It is either using midpoint or datum point, but I have to use datum point to so create partition. So now that edge and the other part, are, they are different. Say that again, select. So now here, uh, partition edge, so select an edge for to partition. So I select that one and then I select a point on the edge. So that is a point selected, create partition. And now you can see in the features, so that is a partition one and that is a partition two. Now these, uh, now here you have three uh, partitions, like uh, two with two partitions, you have three members there. So after that, uh, after that, you need to go to assembly and then you need to create instance. So, uh, I'll go to assembly from here, okay, or I can here in the model tree, okay, I can create instance or here is create instance. So now I'll select all three and I click OK and you can see that so that uh, here is the upper beam left that is upper beam so I can go here so it says that frame one that is upper beam left upper beam right. Now you need to uh, join upper beam parts as uh, with the hinge and for that one here are interaction, you need to create wire features. 
and then you need to create connector section and then you need to create connector assignment so for that purpose uh, i'll go here interactions okay and in interaction i can create wire here so wire i want to connect uh, those two points with the hinge so it says that uh, polyline disjoint wires so i click here and it says select first point so that is the first point and that is the second point so you can go alternatively like you can go there and you can select point one as this one and that is the other point so that you have created so the next one is you need to create connector section and for that one is a basic translational type is link is join and then rotational type is rotation so i click ok continue and then behavior option i go here add elasticity and is a rigid with u r 1 equal 0 so now i have created here connector section you can see that it is a connector section being created and in the features of assembly you can see that is the wire so the next one is assign connector section assignment so it's a select wire or attachment lines to be assigned a section so i click this one done and then it's a connector section one so i click ok so now these are those two upper beam left and right spans they are being uh, connected by a uh, wire and I have defined all those properties the next is uh, next part next I have now I have defined interaction next I need to go assembly and then I translate instance so you can here you can go into the assembly and you can translate instance there or you can go here instance and then you can use that translate so it select the instance to translate so i want to translate that uh, lower part here or i can translate uh, uh, sorry this is right span left uh, i can simply move any of that so let's say let's say this is upper beam left and that is upper beam right so i want to move that right point there so it is being selected okay so this one is in the translate instance select the instant translate so it is being selected done now it says that select an axis or start point of the translation vector so i am going to select this one and that is the end point done okay so now you can see that uh left beam and right beam so they are being connected with a hinge so the next part is i need to translate both of these two here so again uh, i'll go uh, it says that the next one here translate select the instance to translate so i have selected both of these two done now i want to move this point there so it is a starting point here and then that is the end point there so now you have that okay and now now you have translated but still you have just placed uh, these edges here you have just placed those edges so now i want to join these two edges and those two edges and for that one i'll go again in interaction and in interaction I'll in interaction I create constraints so here are this one is create constraints so to learn about more about constraints so you can uh, in the Google you can go for Abacus documentation 2020 online and if you click on that so then the first page which you will get uh, uh, is Abacus 6.14 documentation and that is a back to 6.14 documentation so this one you will see and then you have here a backus 
analysis user guide and that you have if you click on that abacus analysis user guide so then you'll have that one abacus analysis user guide and then you can go here so like uh, analysis user guide you have here constraints so i'll go into the constraints and then it says about overview of the constraints and then you have the following type of kinematic constraints can be defined equations multi-point constraints mcp is a multi-point constraint and further in the multi-point constraints so mcp constraint and that allow you to impose uh, uh, between different degrees of freedom of the model can be quite general so i'm going to use here multi-point constraints so in the multi-point constraints so uh, you have different further options like beams provide a rigid beam between two nodes to constrain the displacement rotation of the first node to the displacement and rotation second node so uh, in this problem you can either use beam or you can use here tie so it says that make all active degree of freedom equal to two nodes so it is uh, you can use beam in this part or you can use tie here because uh, all degree of freedom so they are equal it means that for both of those so uh, i am going to use that tie there so i need to uh, define constraint between these two points so i'll go here so constraint one is mpc and that is mpc i have just explained that it is mcp is multi-point constraint mcp multi-point constraint and for that one you need to go there and that is a mcp continue and it says select the mcp control point so i'll select this one and it say please choose one okay and then select the region to be slave node so it is again there okay so it's a done and then mcp type i'm going to use here tie i click ok so that you can see that mcp tie then again i create constraint constraint to mcp constraint continue select the mpc control point so i'll select that node it's a ambiguous selection please choose one so i say next okay and then the slave region is again there so it's done and then it is tie okay so now i have joined uh, upper uh, part of the sorry upper beam with the rest of the frame so and then you can see these are the two constraints or otherwise you can go here and you can see that that is a constraint one and that is a constraint two so this one. and the next one i need to i have created constraints next mesh seed mesh part and assign element type so i'll go here in the and in the mesh module i have option assembly and part but before that because i want to uh, i want to mesh those uh, at assembly so every part i have to make independent so that is make independent then the second one i need to make it independent and then the third one i need to make it independent so when you are going to do independent so you'll see that mesh is there so now mesh and then assembly or from here you can select our part or you can do that on each part individually so now the seed select the region to assign local seed so that is there done and then i'm going to you have two options by size or by number so i'm going by size of 0.5 so it is being seeded done and then the next one is mesh this one a mesh part so i'll select that one is done so and that is being done and now assign element type and for that one select the region to be assigned element type so i have selected that one done and then standard linear and in the family is beam so you have, uh, so in that way b21 is being selected okay so done so now 
uh, in this part so meshing is done and the next one i need to create step and so you have defined uh, assembly is done and next you can go step and for that one you can have here step or in now you can tab get the tab and create step and then step is static load static load is insert new step after initial and that is a static journal so continue and leave everything as it is so now you can see that static load has been created next i'll go and apply loads so in the loads uh, i have uh, point load one so point load one so point load one is being applied on here at coordinates three five so the point load i'll select here step as a uh, static load concentrated force continue and then i'll select this point is done and now it is distribution is uniform and it is a uh, vertical load in downward direction so 20 raised per 3 20 e3 so that load is being created and you can see that point load is there so then i can go there point load 2 and for point load load 2 again step is static load mechanical concentrated force continue and that is there done and again it is minus 20 e power 3 and i click ok now the third load is udl on upper beam so loads again it is udl static load and it is line load continue and it says that select bodies for the load so i'll select both of these done and it is again minus 20 e raised power 3 so these are the loads defined so now the loads like that is a point load here point load 2 and then is the udl so the next step after that is you need to in the load module you can create boundary condition and the boundary condition for this case for both of boundary condition they are fixed so then i'll here are the boundary condition you can use in the module load and then you can create boundary condition here so let's say i'm going to create boundary condition so that is the boundary condition so let's say that is left okay left support and in the left support step is initial step is initial then category mechanical type of selected step is displacement rotation and it is a fixed support and for fixed support u1 u2 and ur3 all are fixed so then i can see there is the left support so then i can go to the boundary condition and that is right support and then initial category mechanical displacement rotation i'll go continue select that point and then i'll create that u1 u2 u3 so these are now you can see that left support is created right support is created okay now all steps done i can and the next one is after that analysis you need to create job perform data check and then submit so i go there and then in job so that is create job or i have here double click there create job and i'll say chapter 4 and without spaces chapter 4 problem continue okay and then you have here chapter 4 problem i'll perform data check so data check is being submitted then it is going to run and take some time to complete so now you can see that data check has been completed so now i'm going to submit that and it says that already exists so i'll overwrite it so then it is being submitted after some time it start running and then it's running and it takes some time to now the job has been completed so i right click on that and go to the results 
So in the result output database, I can see that chapter four ODB is there. Okay, so this is otherwise I can file open. So I can open that chapter four problem ODB. So this one is a deformed shape and that is it's uh, with the contour. So these are the stresses, then concentrated forces to being applied, concentrated moment, no, none. And then these are the strains. Okay, then you have stresses there and then displacements and then radial displacement. So all these are the, uh, you can get the values there. So next, if you want to create a report of that, so you can go create report, field output, and then uh, you can at integration point, you can select stress components or you can go into the unique node and in unique node you can request like concentrated forces, trains, reaction forces or displacements. So let's say I'm going to request displacements and for all node set and I am going to name it as chapter four problem. So chapter four problem, so I apply and then I can see in that work directory. So somewhere chapter four problem report has been created and that is the report. So here the node labels are shown and because we have created it as three parts. So then Uh, to visualize further, I go to common plot option. I label, select, choose node labels. I'll apply. Okay. So now here uh, you have three sets of nodes. Like for the part one, uh, here we have instance. So that is the frame one. So only nodes for the frame one. That is the upper beam and its nodes start from 1 to 10. Upper beam right, its nodes start from 1 to 10. And in that way, so in that way, like as here at this point, so you have two nodes, 1 and 10. And similarly, at that point, you have node 1 for like, for frame, I think is in, uh, not sure that which one is, but for definitely for upper beam, it is the node one. So when you're going to create report here, so you'll get report for, you'll get report for uh, frame, main fr uh, frame, and then upper beam left, and then upper beam right. So then you can match your, uh, these results with the theoretical one or with FPA results. I hope uh, you like this video. So you can leave comments for your feedback. Thank you very much for watching.